cameras and all eyes were on Peter Obi as he exposes the rot in our system. Tinubu won't like this. He won't like this. But Peter Obi remains a transparent man. A man you can trust at all times. So guys, Mr. Peter Obi came prepared. He came prepared. Take a look at this. We, we are going to use 15 billion. We are going to use 15 billion naira to build a house to have somebody who is already living in one of the most luxurious houses on earth. But everything we saw in this facility will cost less than 5 million naira. So if we decide to add 20% to the 5 million naira, it will be 6 million. And 6 million for 250 facility is 1.5 billion naira, which is 10% of what we are going to use to build a house for somebody who is already living a luxurious life. Who we'll dismantle this criminality. Yes. So guys, I want you to take your time. You know, take your time and watch this video. Peter Obi had an interactive session with obedience. This was his speech. It will leave you weeping. You will cry for your country. Just take a look at this. And I tell you, and I tell you, you will take the decision in ensuring that these old politicians are sent home on retirement. First time, let me most sincerely recognize and thank the organizers of this event. Starting from Dr. Mo. I called Dr. Mo one day and I said, Dr. Mo, please come. And he came and I said, Dr. Mo, I want us to do this, do this, do this. He didn't know, he didn't even know I know who he is. I said, Dr. Mo, as we are running around, I can tell you. So many of you who have put yourself on the line that I have been shocked if I have succeeded. Just like I tell Pat to tell me every day, I say, Pat, my job is easy. All these people who shout and talk, they would have been doing the work while I'm doing the supervision. Because it's easy for them to talk. So I thank you, Dr. Mo, for organizing this. Let me apologize on behalf of my brother, that's it, that is not here. We are giving, Dr. Moore gave us this at a very short notice. Very short notice. If I tell Dr. Moore something today, I booked and everybody knew I was supposed to, for the first time in about three months, or about that, travel out of this country. Today, I had a ticket. I was going to travel with my wife. And when I said to her, you know what? I'm not going to travel with you. She said, what is this? You've changed this over and over again. I said, nobody. I know how you feel about family. But this country comes before the family. I know you say no. I agree with you. There's no... My kids are above 30. And I always tell them, you're on your own. Don't think there's anything you do that will surprise me. Or they'll bother me. No. You're on your own. The only thing I want you is that whatever you do, be a good person. Be of good character. Trust God and do the right things. And try to help humanity wherever you find yourself. So, I'm here because Dr. Moore called me at a short notice. And I apologize on behalf of my brother because he couldn't keep it at a short notice. I recognize a senator, a woman leader, but to Tommy and all those who are here. Mine is to, most sincerely, today is one year anniversary of our election. And it's fitting that I most sincerely thank all of you for your abiding faith in our country. For your belief in the new Nigeria. I can't thank you enough. I even thank the others who have different choices. Democracy is about choice. And I've always said it. If everybody, if I come into a room where everybody loves me, I will leave. Because there's something wrong. There must be people who hate you even for the sake of you. That is what life is all about. So I respect those who have different choices. But I, you who believed 
in the right thing, I sincerely thank you. I thank you for even standing till today. I miss all this pain and suffering. You see, believe there will be a Nigerian. I see, believe there will be a Nigerian. I am Professor Pat went somewhere and somebody said, you're everywhere. I said, yes. Because we have to deal with this issue. We can't just walk away. But everybody knows the pain. Like I said, I've written something here. There's pain what we are going through. Some of you might not know what we, and some will know what people are going through in this country. Just yesterday, just yesterday, Nigerians died because they were stampede while they are trying to buy rice cheaper. Just yesterday, people died because they couldn't to buy rice cheaper. They were buying rice cheaper. That's the only reason why they died. In a country that have over seventy percent of their fertile land uncultivated, people are dying because they are selling rice to them cheaper. I was in a church this morning and they asked somebody, what is your hope for Nigeria? He said he's praying for Nigeria. He's praying for politicians. I said, please, reduce your prayers and put some in action. I'm a politician. I'm a politician in Nigeria. And I can tell you, please, I will tell you, reduce your prayers for us. The people you are praying for are among the most wicked people on the surface of the earth. So it is good that you reduce it and put some in action. I visited Tongu Magaji with Dr. Mo in a primary health care where they have over 50 women that are pregnant. In a primary health care, over 50 women that are pregnant. That primary health care had only one staff. One staff. Attending to, I said, over 50 is pregnant. There's other ones that are not pregnant. There were over 100 women in that place. Only one staff. And I said, Madam, I want to see all the facilities there. They had a roof that has gone off and it's raining. There was no light. It doesn't have light. And I went into the delivery room. There was no toilet. That is in our capital territory. So imagine what is in our villages. And I asked Dr. Mo, how many, how many primary health care is there in, in FCT? He says to me, there are about 258. So about 250. And I said to him, Dr. Mo, we must dismantle this criminality. We, we are going to use 15 billion we are going to use 15 billion naira to build a house to have somebody who is already living in one of the most luxurious houses on earth but everything we saw in this facility will cost less than 5 million naira so if we decide to add 20% to the 5 million naira it will be 6 million and 6 million for 250 facility is 1.5 billion naira, which is 10% of what we are going to use to build a house for somebody who is already living a luxurious life. Who we'll dismantle this criminality? It is a very uncaring thing. Very, very uncaring. Today, the world is competing only on one to the education. If you compare us with every other nation that is doing well. The only reason why they are doing better is education. It is shown in every study that the more educated you are, the better your development. And then we have to renovate the house of the president 
6.9 billion. To buy, no, sorry. To buy car vehicles in the supplementary budget for the president, 6.9 billion. To buy cars for the first lady, 1.6. Total of 8.4 billion. But we have for scholarship, for loan for students, 5 billion. No country functions like this. And this cannot continue. We use 21 billion naira to build a health facility in Asarok where the occupants don't even go to hospital here. And our budget for a national hospital, which is an ambulance, ambulance is 2.8 billion capital vote. So it's not even up to 10% of what we are using. Tell me, I have served as a governor, and anybody can go and check and ask the people there when they said they have a clinic in, in the lodge, and I said, You can't have it here. Go to the general hospital. If governor is sick, they carry him there. There's no reason why President of Nigeria cannot be treated in the National Hospital. The reason why I said this is because we said we don't have the resources. We have the resources. We need to manage it very efficiently. I don't want to talk about production today. Because I've just told you we are fighting for rice. We're fighting for rice. We're fighting for food. One of our most difficult security places is Sambisa Forest. If you have traveled to anywhere in Africa, Egypt, Morocco, for part to tell me then that travels, as you travel from one city to the other, your left and your right, all you see is farm. Sambisa Forest is 600. 60,000 square kilometers. You see me say it every day. The entire area of Sambisa is 60,000 square kilometers. That is three times the size of Israel. Israel is 22,000 square kilometers. Times three, 66 and 60, same thing. Yet it's become a problem for us. When it should have been source of wealth, source of income, source of everything. People are protesting for food in Niger State. Can you believe it? Niger states have the best land on the surface of the earth for production, agricultural production. 76.2 thousand square kilometers of land. And they can't feed themselves. So they are protesting for food because nobody supported them, nobody helped them and everything. When tiny countries, like I always use, Netherlands, we have half of that land. Netherlands without water is at 3,000. With water is about 41,000. But the agricultural export for 2021, which is what I always reference, is over $120 billion. Agricultural export from 30 to 3,000 square kilometers. When we have 76.3, that is fatal, protesting and striking for hunger. Because of what? There's nothing wrong with Nigeria. We have one of the best fertile land in the world. We have one of the best air. God gave us oil. Gave us all sorts of mineral resources. Our waters have the best fishes. The only thing that we lack is leadership. Leadership that is willing to sacrifice for our future. And that is what all you see today is magic. If we say the rate of exchange is bad, we start chasing breed to change people on the street. Have you ever seen that before happening anywhere in the world? Everywhere you go in the world, for those of you who came from Europe, breed to change is every country in the world. So why are we chasing breed to change? What is breed to change? Breed to change is neither the supplier, nor is it the person who is demanding. He's just a market provider for those who willing seller and willing buyer. He has committed offense. Well, everybody knows that the only way you can, the only way you can show up your currency is by a simple thing, 
productivity. The more you produce, the more you deal with issue of stability of your currency. But what is even shocking, they are chasing breed to change people. People are even selling Naira. They are not chasing them. They are just not even who are selling dollar. But Naira is being sucked everywhere. And we can go on and on. It's still our country. We have no other country except this one. And we will deal with it. We're not going to run away from there. We're going to stay here. Let me assure you people, I know your pain. I know your difficulty. People have gone through this pain. We're all going to be in it together. We're not going to go away. People have said, a woman that have said he's doing it for his children. People have said, I gave the young people hope. It is our country. I've said repeatedly, I'm not a saint, but I'm not a criminal. I've managed public money judiciously. And I know that we can achieve something better if we manage our resources more efficiently. If we have people who care about this country, look at where we are today. All we hear is bad news. People say we can't. I said it in Pastor Tommy's birthday. Is that we have a country or the criminals take it over? If we have a country, let's declare war and have that country. Somebody must be in charge. Is that us or criminals? How can criminals overrun us? Have been a governor. And I said it. Anybody who can go and see it in Anambra State. I told them, is that them or me? One person must have the space. And we dealt with it. Why can't we deal with it as in Nigeria? Why are people occupying our waters and everything? Today, we spend more time chasing young boys with computers and say they are doing Yahoo Yahoo people. When people are stealing the billions which we have as a government. Why are we wasting our time? Why are we doing that? Why are we chasing young men all over the place? I can assure you that all the money that Yahoo Yahoo people have stolen in one year in one year, is not up to the amount of money that has been stolen in government in one day. I have been an insider. What we want is those who are stealing our public money. I'm not encouraging anybody to steal, but we will deal with those who are stealing our common resources first. Let's catch them first. They are the ones causing us problems. They are the ones who have a lot of money without productivity. They are the ones causing from inflation to high rate of exchange. Because they have billions without productivity. Let's deal with it. We're not dealing with it. Today is our anniversary. Today we have resolved to continue in this direction where we are. We cannot stop. Please do not stop. Do not say it is all about me. I'm not desperate to be president of Nigeria. I'm desperate to see Nigeria work. We need to make it work for everybody. There's no reason why there should be poverty in northern Nigeria. God gave them everything. Nigeria can make more money from agriculture in the north than we make from oil. I say it every day and I compare every state in the world. I've said it before several times. you heard me say it. The richest state in America is California. That's not where they have the oil. It's in Texas. Texas is about third or fourth. California is eight time, nine times Nigeria at 3.6 trillion GDP when we are 400. It is agriculture and knowledge before oil. We have 70% of our fatherland in the north all cultivated. The North is the engine we can use to turn around Nigeria. We need to invest in the North. There's no reason why people in Boronu, there's no reason why people in Kebi, people in Niger, people in Kogi, people in Benue, they have no reason to be involved with hunger. Because they have all the takes.
to feed nations all over the world. Nigeria has the best yam, but the biggest yam exporting country is Ghana. Now they say we should go and import food. Import from where? Is it Ghana? We have, have no yam. What do we eat? It's the only thing that is available outside is the rice. Are we going to invest? Nigeria is supposed to be the highest producer of cassava. But we are not the greatest export. Are we going to buy it from people who come and buy it and export? Now they said that our problem is to close the border so that food will not go out. No. Our problem is to produce more, have enough to eat, and export and earn money. And it is easy. It is not rocket science. You have all sorts of funny policies here. They say our nurses can't even go out. Our doctors can't go out. What are you talking? Indians did it. They produce more doctors, more nurses. Cuba is doing it. Let's produce build school, school of nursing in every local government. Produce nurses, ship them to the world. Have enough here. And those who ship to the world will help in bringing what? The needed money. Foreign currency. And it's easy. When you see these things happening, you ask yourself, what is happening here? At times you feel maybe you're wrong. So you have sleepless nights. I always say, Pastor, I wake up most times at night and ask myself a question. Are you wrong or right? Well, because I've been in the private space. We have shared these corporations. I've been in the public space. So I can understand what is happening. And I always say, I have the best experience for the job. I'm a trader. So I know what the traders suffer. I've been in the corporate world. So I know what the people in the corporate world need to because there's also problems there that need to be fixed. And I've been in public space. So I know what is wrong with the country. And we can fix it. There's nothing in it. <laughs> countries after countries have generated power. Simple power. Power is sophisticated in Nigeria. A company like Egypt from 2015 to 2021 moved their power generation and distribution from under 20,000 megawatts to about 50,000. Today, Egypt is exporting power to Europe. Nigeria is still quarreling with those of things. These are things you can fix that can make your country to become productive. Today, we are saddled with people telling us it is about revenue. We don't have enough revenue. How can you have enough revenue where 80% of your people are poor? Revenue is a function of productivity. The more you produce, the more revenue you make. Can you go to market and without anything to sell and people will pay you? You have to have something to sell. It's only in Nigeria people want to go to market without anything to sell and come back with money. We cannot continue in that direction. My dear people, today is the day of thank you. I thank you, your obedience. I thank you, those who supported us. I thank you most sincerely from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of those who have worked hard. That's what Prof. Everybody is here to thank you. We remain sincerely grateful. People might tell you, oh, he has not come to see me. He has not seen me here. He has not done this. Please, wherever you are, if we have not seen you, know that I'm kneeling down and saying to you, thank you. You were, you were great. You are great. You are one of those social things that happen to humanity. We will soon embark on tour to say thank you to people. And to urge them to understand that we've not reached the ending. It is not beginning of the ending. It is ending of the beginning. We've just begun. We will be there. And don't think that if anything, I always say to people who are private to me, don't think that if anything happens to Peter Obi, no, it's not about Peter Obi. It's about all of us. So if they think they're going to take one person away, the rest will continue. In fact, they will have motivated them to continue. Because we must continue until we dismantle the criminality called Nigeria. We cannot continue this way. People who genuinely want to do business are suffering.
people who generally want to do good things are suffering. When people who are selling, when thieves are living in affluence, it cannot be. Nigerians are dying by rice. Because they say rice is cheaper. So they now went to buy rice and there was stampede and Nigerians died. I cried over it. Buying rice. They were not trying to struggle for gold. It was rice. Nigerians can't get fuel. Nigerians can Everything is scarce here. Even what God gave them is scarce. They can't travel by road. Nigerians are paid 30, if you're lucky to get a job, 30,000. At the time, when one egg is 200 naira. At the time, pure water is? At the time, a bottle of Coke is how much? Tell me. And bread is how much? Let me assure you, you are the ones making this speech. It's not me making this speech again. You are the one making this speech. But let me assure you, one of the things that brought French Revolution was bread. I hope people know. They said they wanted bread. The queen said, why can't they? And now they are right. Those who are in charge don't know what their problem is. Those who are in charge in Nigeria don't understand our problem. And we must dismantle them. God bless you. He didn't see this coming. He thought obedience were just gathering to chat. You know, he didn't know that this kind of exposure, I mean, exposing the rot in their government was going to come. So guys, I know you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell for more updates and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you. So guys, Mr. Peter Obi came prepared. He came prepared. Take a look at this.